High hyperdiploidy is one of the most common chromosomal abnormalities that you see in pediatric acute lymphoblastic leukemia. And it accounts for about 30 to 35 percent of B cell precursor acute lymphoblastic leukemia. And although it's been associated with a good outcome um, in multiple clinical trials, the relapse rate is still uh, reasonably high. And given its prevalence, high hyperdiploidy still accounts for a large number of relapses in ALL. And therefore, uh, defining the, the precise metrics of high hyperdiploidy is very important. Now, historically, high hyperdiploidy has been defined simply by the number of chromosomes in the leukemic karyotype with a, a modal number of 51 to 65 or 67 chromosomes indicating high hyperdiploidy. Over the past 20 years, many study groups have looked to see whether the modal chromosome number or specific trisomies are associated with either a good or a poor outcome within this subgroup. And although many papers have identified uh, significant associations. Very few of them have been validated in independent study groups. And uh, also very few um, uh, studies have taken a kind of comprehensive global look at all the risk factors within high hyperdiploidy. And this is what we did in this study. We used two um, large contemporary um, uh, serial clinical trials based in the UK and analyzed all existing and potential risk factors within a high hyperdiploidy. And what we found is we found that you needed to know the trisomic status of four chromosomes to get the maximum amount of prediction power with, within these cohorts. And furthermore, we identified uh, a pattern of chromosomal gain based on the gain of chromosomes 17, 18, 5, and also 20. And if you had a particular profile of those gains, um, we identified a group of patients that had a very low risk of relapse um, at 10 years, which was less than 5%. In the remaining patients that didn't have this good risk profile, their relapse rate was um, around 15%, which is much more um, like the, the relapse rate you expect to see with intermediate cytogenetics. So when we looked at the validation cohort, this is based on a trial called UCAL 2003, we found that 80% of patients had this good risk copy number profile, i.e. this good risk pattern of trisomies, and the remaining 20% had the poor risk one. So by far the vast majority of high hyperdiploidy patients have this good risk uh, pattern of chromosome gain. And we compared this uh, pattern of chromosome gain, this profile, with existing uh, um, risk factors in high hyperdiploidy, including the triple trisomy of chromosomes 4, 10, and 17, which is used by the Children's Oncology Group in America. And we found that um, our definition was as good as um, uh, the triple trisomy used by the Children's Oncology Group, but it accounted for a much larger proportion of patients with the, the traditional definition of high hyperdiploidy of 51 to 65 chromosomes. So going forward, we feel that um, our new definition of high hyperdiploidy based around the gain, the trisomic status of these four chromosomes is a much more powerful way of identifying a large group of pediatric ALL patients that could be considered for treatment de-escalation. In contrast, the patients with a poor risk profile are definitely a group of patients, admittedly only 20% of the traditional high hyperdiploidy group that should not be considered for treatment de-escalation because of their relapse risk. Um, and all the other results that we found were independent of um, MRD at the end of induction um, as based on the data that we had in UCAL 2003. So going forward, we feel that the definition of high hyperdiploidy should now shift away from just simply counting chromosomes to looking at the pattern of uh, chromosome gain um, in the karyotype and in order to define a better and larger low-risk group of pediatric acute lymphoblastic leukemia.
Obviously, this means that we would you would have to identify the trisomy status of all the chromosomes. However, many genetic laboratories around the world are now using SNP arrays um, in order to um, enhance the genetic testing of patients at initial diagnosis. And of course, if you do a SNP array, you will automatically identify the trisomic status of all chromosomes with a high degree of accuracy. So we feel that our profile will be easily identifiable going forward and also offer uh, a, a better group, uh, a better definition for risk stratification.